So guys, uh, this is a carbon family, and uh, this is going to be, as usual, a line-by-line -line, uh, demystification, explanation, and with our PYQ, which means our past year question. So if you are just joining this channel, kindly subscribe, and uh, make sure you are with your writing materials as well as uh, jotting down the points that is necessary. Like I do say, there are a lot of questions you are going to solve, and there are some which you are going to be seeing for the first time. So this type of uh, chemistry video talks about concepts and also talks about knowing some characteristics of different elements, which is the first thing I want to face before going into the organic aspect. So I'm taking the periodic table, like I do stay in my offline classes, and the more you know the periodic table, the more you know chemistry. So this chemistry video is not only for ordinary level students or advanced level student as well, because I'm taking it from zero to all to what you need to know about the carbon family. So if you are in uh, year one, year two in tertiary institution, you can as well watch this video. I think this is going to be more than 100 questions which we are going to talk here in the video. And uh, like I do say, don't forget, very important, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, share, and do make comments, because this is what keeps us going. You know what I mean. So guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment to know to save you better. So guys, I'll be a little bit fast. So this is also for revision for some students who are actually writing an exam on uh, you know, organic chemistry, once you hear about carbon family and other family. And quickly watch the video, increase the pace of the video, and uh, make sure you jot those points you don't know. Jot them down in form of short notes. So guys, I start with the first question. Now the first question is, uh, in elementary state, carbon is available as dash. Now, before we delve into talking about uh, the state of carbon, we need to understand that we are talking about group 14. A quick way of explanation, I do the normal method I use. This is group 14 element, modern periodic table by Mendel, uh, by Henry Mosley. Group 14 element, and when you talk about group 14 element, basically you talk about uh, general configuration. That's the first thing I talk about, NS2, MP2. So that is their general configuration. The group members, which you know, carbon is the first family in the group. Silicon will be the next, followed by germanium. Then you have tin. Then you have lead. The lead is PB. I'm just writing it like that. You can write it in another way. And you have the one they call flavorium. flavorium. I hope my spelling is correct, but that is the way we call it. It's called flavorum, flavorium. So now for above this, uh, this is the general configuration. You know the logic of the magic number I told you about. When you know the first member, you can easily put it the atomic number of the next family. I hope you guys are there. So if you want to write like it is in group 14, so this guy is going to be, this is rolling. Like I do say the app is running, we have to wait for it to come back up. Because it's in group 14, last member will be 114. The symbol of flavorium is a flav, is a FL. Because other questions can come in this one, capital letter, the small letter, you know that very well. So the last member will be 114. And if you want to write the configuration, you need to be at the seventh period. I always talk NS2. So 7S to 7P2, you write radon which I think we've talked about that. Then we talk about halogen from our family and also the other family. So chemistry teacher way or science teacher method of writing, right? Ray down to the closest, closest halogen. You are going to one of us. So you have the 5F orbital. I'm writing the configuration of this guy. It should be completed. Then NS, but N minus 1D, that is 6D and 6D10 completed. Then you now finish it with NS2, MP2, 7S2, then 7P2. So this will be the configuration of the last member. So because I have a long way to go, I think the best way in which I can give you more light into what you need to know about this family is uh, taking the question one by one. And as carbon, with respect to the question we have here, as carbon, as you can see, carbon exists as the form of elemental state 
to the mental state. Fat carbon is said to be the 17th most abundant element on the earth, 17th most abundant. Because I know some questions can ask you on silly questions, abundant on that surface. So I'll just take you to some physical stuff you can keep in mind. So elemental state of carbon, you can see carbon in form of coal. You can see it in form of graphite. You can see it in form of diamond. As well, you can also see carbon in a combined state. So as a combined state element, you can see them in hydrocarbons. Everybody should remember that from junior classes. You can also see it in form of carbonate, carbonate, that is a carbonate or bicarbonate. And you can also see them in form of carbon dioxide. That is carbon dioxide. So that is the nature in which you can put in as an element or in the form of a combined state. So talking about more, talking more about the element, you know the properties we first of all look at the properties of the periodic table to classify each of them, how they increase and decrease. Now, most of this, if you watch very well, you are going to notice something about this group 14 element. These two member, carbon and silicon, they are non-metal, non-metals. So carbon and silicon are non-metal. We are asked, when you look into germanium, which is GE, some question can test you on that. Germanium is a semi-metal called metalloids, which is semi-metal. So these are some important things. Why by tin and lead are metal? So these tin and lead are metals. So you can see. So most of the you know carbon silicon will form covalent bond, and as you move toward then and then you expect them to form and go to the trillion because of the size and because they become what they are now becoming more metallic. So the chemistry of flavorium is not known. So up to now, up to the moment I'm teaching this particular video, the chemistry of this flavorium is not known. So I'm only trying to give you some other things. There are a lot of use of carbon because carbon has a tendency to combine with different elements. And it's, it is also the basic or the organic source are the major source of organic chemistry. You know that. Silicon, we can say, when we talk about silicon, pure silicon mostly are used as, a, they are used in a, a semiconductor. I said they are semi-metals. So they are, they are used as semiconductor. Your physics concept, you might have studied that, talking about uh, intrinsic and uh, extrinsic semiconductor. You remember, extrinsic, pure semiconductor. So silicon, it says uh, silicon and germanium. So you can take that. So most of them are used as semiconductor. Tin and lead, I don't need to tell you what tin and lead are mostly used. They are metal. They can be used as what? To form alloys. They can prepare, they can be used to prepare alloys. And you know the major use of what? Metal. So I'm just trying to let you know that they have a lot of use. When you talk about um, silicon, also exists in form of silicate, which we are still going to talk about when we get to silicon question. That is talking about. They are morphous, just like carbon too, you know. Carbon also, I can also help you write this, and I think it's important before I move on. But I'll still talk about many, many things, like I do say. Carbon also exists and will form isotopes. You can also keep that in mind in junior classes. Carbon form isotope from isotopes. I have used several minutes here. I don't want to be using up to two, two minutes on each slide. Just tell you what I need to tell you, then I move on. That's exactly what I want to be doing. So carbon from isotopes. So the isotopes are now classified into two categories. You just need to understand that. Now, the isotope of carbon can be carbon-13, carbon-12, carbon-14. The way we write it in chemistry is carbon-12, carbon-13, and uh, carbon-14. The major thing you can keep in mind here is that these carbon-14 are radioisotopes. Radio isotopes to start with the first one that is, and basically, I think it has an half life of uh, 5,770 years. This is eight minutes on this slide. I will move on now. 
So, and again, it is used for dating, archaeological dating, archaeological, permit my spelling, logical dating. So, carbon dating, carbon 14. So, those are things you need to keep in mind. And um, in, in, as we move forward, you are going to be learning more and more about um, what we call uh, more about carbon family. So I just want to continue answering the question. It will give you more light to understanding. And because if I continue to talk, I can continue to talk for more than two hours, teaching you all what you need to know. But line by line will be the best method. And that is why I put it in this form. I hope you understand. So we can move forward and answer questions. question. And talking about this, and also say these two forms are stable. These are stable isotopes. That is classification. And these are common 14 is unstable. And so to say it is radioactive, we definitely know it to be a stable image. So guys, let's start answering the question one by one, line by line, and helping you to answer them and giving you some knowledge about other things you need to know as you move forward. So I hope you enjoy the method. Let's start. Elemental state, coal, graphite, and diamond is correct. So this is the, all of this will be the answer to this question. We will go to the next second. I have over 113 questions. I want to talk about so i will be a little bit fast after giving you a deep knowledge about all this thing i will just have to move on look at this now in combined state carbon is present as metal carbonate as hydrocarbon as carbon dioxide so i talked about this so this will also be the answer to this i think we can move to the third question <laughs> now the third question says the total number of isotopes of carbon is that i gave you the isotope of carbons i said there are three isotopes of carbon you remember that there are three isotopes of carbon and uh, which i talked about carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14. these and these are stable this is unstable because it is radio radioactive now the next question, the two isotopes of carbon, the two stable isotopes of carbon are carbon 12 and 13, already discussed, will be the right answer to that. The next question, the radioisotope of carbons are, I talked about this, carbon 14 is radioisotope as it is used for carbon dating. The next question, the element which is only present in traces is dash. And this is a good question we need to know. So we need to talk about the members and how they are available on the earth. You know, I talked about the members of carbon of carbon family. That is the name of the family. It's general conglomeration NS2, MP2. Now, I said the first member is carbon. The next member is silicon. Oh, wow. Silicon is the next member. I'm waiting for this to come up. After silicon is germanium. After germanium is tin. Then you have the lead. Then you have the word flavorium. So silicon is next. Then we have to just take that. I said carbon combined with almost all elements. And it is the basis of organic chemistry, which we are still going to talk about. Good time. I hope you are with me. So now you just need to understand something. Yeah, I think we are back. So this is silicon. Now, silicon is even tagged as the second most abundant, second most abundant element on the earth. It also falls out through crystalline and non crystalline, which are in form of uh, the crystalline forms are common quartz. I think you guys do know quartz, crystobalite, quartz, those are the common common allotropes, crystalline allotropes. But don't worry about it. Kislego is a, a move force. Don't worry, I'll still take you one by one on it and how to know it. So second most abundant, this is the 17th most abundant. Then the next one, which is the answer to this question, which is germanium. Germanium is not what? Is not only what? Only available in traces. In traces. So that is, they are not that common. I hope you understand that they are not that common. So I want to talk about the next one, tin. Tin exists mainly as, why I'm taking it line by line is for you to understand SNO2, which you call 
can see terrorite can say terrorite <clears throat> so tin oxide is called cassiterite then the next member is lead pb and that one is also ppo2 lead oxide i know you've had oh lead sulfide not lead oxide <laughs> apologies pbs and that is called gelina very common under your metallurgy extraction of metals from its ore. so gelina so the last one is flavorium i told you about flavorium i said flavorium uh actually the chemistry of flavorium is the most i hope you understand that so those are things you need to keep in mind for so without wasting time because i have a long way to go i think it's just question five out of one or something so i have to up my place so germanium is only available in traces you be the question answer my dear student come on for the next question the next question about the next question we have the next question is tin or coal in nature as you have tin and uh cassiterite is correct and cassiterite is SNO2. So be careful about this type of questions, they are deadly questions. I call them multiple choice questions. So the answer to this is uh both A and B because cassiterite, cassiterite is SNO2. We talked about that. So the next one. Now let or call in nature as PBS, which is called gelina. So this is the answer to the question. So be careful about that. We talked about this too. Hope you guys are actually getting all this stuff. The next says the synthetically prepared radioactive element of carbon family. I told you when you hear the word synthetically prepared, it is always the last member of the group. That is the shortcut. Direct shortcut, last member of the group. So the last member of the group is uh, flavorium, FL. So just note that. So since flavorium is the last member of this group, excuse me. So we know it's what it is prepared synthetically. Apologies, guys. The next question. So waiting for the next question. The valence shell of electronic configuration of elements in group 14 is the uh, valence shell of, of those elements is we are talking about carbon family. Please note that. And I've talked about that. They are valence shell is NS2 MP2. So NS2 MP2 would be the answer. To that, guys. The next question. Waiting for the next question. What do we do now? Now we are asked about the covalent radius. You know, we are used to this, so we shouldn't make any mistake when we talk about these things. So we should be careful about the inequality sign because these are things that can take over. Some of you are very good understanding the trend of the periodic table, but when it comes to some technical question, which examiner will ask you? You do make mistakes so maybe we talk about some important we've talked about them in different uh family and i think you should also know that one thing about covalent radius now when we talk about covalent radius now we talk about there is always what let's take it with respect to the members before them now i can just say group 14 element have i covalent radius let me put the word of the question and also ionization entropy or ionization energy entropy than group 13. i have told you many many times Chemistry teacher shortcut method is that ionization energy is inversely proportional to, to size. So this is the logic. So because of that, you expect this guy, size is the major factor. You can also talk about other things, but the major factor, like I didn't tell you, is the size. So they do have a considerably what large amount of covenant radius than group 13. And this is just also the same reason. Uh, whereby we say as we move from carbon which is the first family apologies the next one is silicon after carbon we have silicon then after silicon apologies guys carbon to silicon so you expect them you know we talk about covalent radar what do you expect the radius atomic radius is always increasing as you move down to the group 
So now carbon to silicon, there is a large increase. I'm wasting time. I will have to increase very soon. So as you now see that for well, the next one, after you have germanium, GE, to lead to then there is a small increase. To lead, then to tin. So you have, but the stuff, it, it increases than the group. So, but here, it's more increase. So, those know that because it increases, you know, the meaning of ingredients is going to be less than you are starting from carbon. So, I think the first one, be careful about the carbon, silicon, germanium, lead, and tin. It should be tin and lead. Tin should come before, before lead. So, let's just be careful about that sometimes. Some questions can be what can be technical, even if you are not careful why you are picking. The next one. Now, covalent radius from carbon to silicon increases, and from silicon to lead, a small increase is observed due to that. Now, I have said this. Now, the reason why covalent radius increases as you move from carbon to silicon and as you move from silicon to lead is a small increase is just because of uh, when you see carbon and silicon don't have what we call the D and F orbit. Is absence. Absence. So the absence of D and F orbital makes them to have a very large covalent increase of covalent radius. So absence of D orbital is the major thing. And when we talk about ab absence of D of the orbital, so another thing is because as you are moving down, I told you the size of the atom is what is increasing. So you can say here this is very correct, most correct, and this is also very correct. Z effective is also increasing than the group. So keep this in mind. So this will be the answer to this question. We've done more about characteristics and behavioral patterns of different elements in different groups. You need to know them because examiner love to test you on this, especially for those my Indian students that are doing need exam very soon. You can always keep this in mind because uh, this was also a request video from one of my students and I could talk about carbon family extensively. And that is why I'm doing this online for her because she's not more available as she has traveled for her to be able to watch the video and understand better in English. So the next question will be, yeah, fine. Now, the first ionization entropy of group 14 member is that I told you an ionization energy of group 14 is higher than that of well. Higher than group 13. So that is the answer to this. They are, they are higher than them. The next question, we have to increase our pace. The next question is in general, ionization entropy of group, mem mem group 14 member dash. What do you expect for ionization energy in the, in the group? Ionization entropy, ionization energy, anyhow. You know entropy is an energy, each or gain. You understand that. So you expect the ionization entropy to what? To decrease than the group. Ionization energy only increase across the period. So this is the answer to this. We know that logic very well. The next one. The ionization entropy slightly increased from this to this because of dash. Now, the reason I told you, I think I have explained this when I was talking about uh, the effect of uh, size, the effect of size. So ionization energy is inversely proportional to size. I talked, I talked about that. So if you're actually following me well, you are going to know that what actually causes it, this is loading, we have to what? We have to what? Be careful. So because of increase in size, you expect ionization energy entropy to, uh, sorry, because of decrease in size, you can see, to lead because of slightly increase. Oh, sorry. So now I told you size is inverse proportional to ionization energy. So another reason which I talked about is our uh, presence of D and F orbital, which causes what we call a poor shielding. Poor shielding. So because of so here we can say the first thing we can keep in mind is because of poor shielding. That is because of what the D and F orbital are going to intervene. And that is the reason why what the ionization entropy increases from what led uh, from tin to lead. There's a slight increase when we study it. You know, it should be decreasing down the group, but from tin to lead, there was a slight, slight increase because 
of the presence of what? Because of increase in size and because of what? As an increase in size, there are two reasons and because of pure or what? Poor shading of the and effort orbital. But here we don't have increase in size, we have decrease in size. That is why I'm not picking A and B. So because some of you might have think whenever it's after A and B answer, the answer is going to be A and B. So it is wrong. So the next one. The next question is uh, the element of group 14, the element of group 14 elements are slightly more electronegative than electro electronegative than group 13 due to that. I think we talked about this as well. We can talk about uh, two things. We talk about their inner core. Inner core is one of the major reasons that also affects what that is the configuration inside. Please note that because you know the, the chemistry teacher will method of getting this, like I do say it's NS, N minus one D, MP. So the inner core, if it is filled up, you know, there will be no what kind of what ability to release or gain electron. So if the F orbital is filled up, that means that particular thing cannot undergo reaction. So inner core definitely affects electronegative, electronegativity, the tendency to release or gain electron. I get an H is affected by inner core. So in whatever case, inner core can always be attributed to a change in electronegativity. Keep that at the back of your mind. And I've said this one that the small size, size is inverse proportional to electronegative. And the reason why group 14 are more or slightly more electronegative than what. So these two answers are correct. So I'm going to go for this as the correct answer. I hope you guys are getting this. These are trained, but we need to talk about them before we go into what, what the chemistry of carbon itself and other elements on that carbon. And as well as it as a point. Now, the correct order of electronegativity of group 14 element is that. Now, students need to be careful about this because we said electronegativity of group 14 element, generally, electronegativity decreases than the group. You all learn that from junior classes, decreases than the group. But when we look into a close look of group 14 elements, we understand something. The first thing we understand was that the electronegativity of them are of, of carbon, say it's what? It decreases than the group. You can say it's what? Carbon is greater than silicon because carbon is the first member. It will have high electronegativity, high ionization energy. Because of its small size, you know that you expect all these things to happen. And because of the absence of what? D and F, what at the F, what the D orbital and the F, what orbital. But what we now notice, you can you can always keep this in mind. Nota bene, note that this is carbon is of high electronegative than silicon. But when we now after silicon, we now saw that what well, the electronegative of other elements are almost the same. And that is why when you see your textbook or text material, this is what you are going to see, and this is what the examiner loves to ask because. After silicon to lead, they have almost same electronegativity. It is important for you to keep it in mind. As you can see, we said these guys and these guys are metal. This is a non-metal. This is a semi-metal metal, and these two are non-metal. So you expect the inner core structure to change, and that is why the correct answer to this will be this. And we can move to the next one. Yes, we still have more than 75 questions to talk about. So I think I need to increase the pace. And I'm sorry if I am what if I am a little bit fast, but we just have to what, increase the pace a little, a little bit. So now about this, we can talk about uh, some other things. All members of group 14 are that. So let's talk about some physical properties, which I think you can also keep down some notes. Physical PPT. PPT means property according to me. So now we say some physical properties are. All members are solid. I hope you know that. Like I said before, carbon and silicon are non metal. Germanium is metalloid. And uh, Lead and tin, or tin and lead, in other are metals. I hope you understand that. So, because of that, we expect metal to have high melting point, and uh, so basically, they have high 
melting and boiling point. Boiling point. So basic property. So generally the group 14, they have high melting point, but basically you expect uh, the melting point to increase as you are going down the group because they, but they become more metallic as you are going down the group. So these are little physical properties you can talk about. Then we can also talk about chemical property, maybe in the next slide. But for this, the answer to this is solid. This should be the answer. All of them are solid in nature. The next one. With respect to element of group 14, which of the following statement is correct? Carbon and silicon are non metal is correct. Germanium is metalloid, semi metal is correct. Tin and lead are soft metal is correct. The answer to this will be all of this. The next question. With respect to group 14 elements, which is correct? Group 14, group 14 contain metals, metalloids, and non metal, correct? Melting point and boiling point of growth is higher than that of group 13, yes, of course. All members of group 14 are solid is also correct. Definitely all answers are correct. The next one. The common oxidation state of the common oxidation state exhibited by elements are that is group 14 element, please. For group 14 element, the common oxidation state, let's quickly talk about chemical properties. Some chemical properties common to all the members of the group. Let's start. Now, talking about their OS, when I say OS, I mean oxidation state. They exist in plus four and uh, plus two. So they have these two types of uh, oxidation state because why do they exhibit that? It's because their ionization energy is what is high. They have high ionization energy. Please note that. Now, we also say in heavier metals, listen to this, the tendency to achieve plus two oxidation states increases from, it increases like germanium, then to tin, then to, to lead. That is, when we talk about uh, ability to actually get towards plus four oxidation state. So that means what I'm saying is what tin has a tendency to what uh, get towards oxidation state of plus four than lead, and lead has a power more is what uh, can easily reach plus four oxidation states than tin, and tin can easily reach plus four oxidation states than germanium. So please note that. Now, then talking about we are talking about chemical properties that is common to all members. We can also talk about another important thing, which I think you can also keep in mind. Talking about their stability. Now, the stability of all most of them is what they are more stable. They are more stable with higher, with high or with higher. Let me say with high oxidation state. At least you expect them to be more stable with plus four than what than plus two. That is what I'm saying. So to know which one is more stable, just calculate the OS. When you check the OS of that particular compound, you will know which one is more stable. Though, you know, chemistry is full of exception. That's another thing you need to understand. Chemistry is full of exception. So because, uh, and again, you can also say, because we need to talk about some fundamental things on chemical properties on each of the members. You can also keep in mind, this is still loading as usual. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this thing to come back. So as usual, we are talking about some chemical properties. Very good. Now, some chemical properties of uh, of group 14 element, talking about their uh, high oxidation, or uh, high uh, ionization entropy or ionization energy. It makes them to exhibit uh, two oxidation state that is plus two and plus four. Carbon can also exhibit what plus four oxidation state, but carbon cannot exist in what? Uh, it's difficult for carbon to be in what plus two oxidation state. And you know the reason is the same as a lack of D and F what orbital. So note that. Now, another thing we can also write, I think I want to talk about stability. I say stability is proportional to a number of uh, OS, the oxidation state of uh, so note that uh, most of uh, this member of this family are what are 
they are more of a reducing agent. They are used generally as a reducing agent. Especially when they are what? When their oxidation state is in what? Is in plus four. So most of them act as a reducing agent. Please note that. So note that only few of them can act as reducing agent when they are in plus two. A very good example is tin. So tin is a reducing agent, a reducing agent with OS. OS means oxidation state with OS of uh, plus two. So that is just the exception. So note that. Note that. So another thing you can also. So I'm mostly also. Uh, let compound also exhibit plus two oxidation states. So what I'm trying to say in essence is just most of them exhibit these two oxidation state plus one plus two. It is very difficult for carbon to exhibit oxidation state of plus two because of the absence of what I said that absence of T and what F orbital. They don't have that. That is one thing about them. So the presence of T and F orbital makes all these your, your tin, lead, germanium are to exhibit what plus what plus two oxidation states. So, and I said most of them, carbon cannot exist its covalent. You know, carbon is number, everybody know number six in the periodic table. Whole school configuration is two, four. For understanding, say, we say it's a tetravalent, whatever. Tetravalent atom. Tetravalent. I'm wasting too much of time here. And why I'm wasting time is because for you to know. So, it's always what exhibits this. It's needed for more electron. So, basically, you expect it to what its covalent nature to be like that. Because it cannot, it, it can only accept. So because of that, it can only exist in plus two. Only a few occasions you see it in what, and the reason when fly in plus four, and uh, that is why the most common metal you see when it's combined with halogen, you can remember tetrachloromethane, tetra CCl4. You remember this very well. Now I am not going into talking about this, but I want you to understand that it cannot exceed this octet, which is eight. So it can only take four more. So because of that, you don't expect it to what to actually what to actually pass. Is tendency to what to form what to group with other elements. So this limits some reaction of carbon, and that is why you you hardly find carbon exhibiting what more than what more than four. It cannot take more than four electrons. So because of that, it is difficult for carbon to what to exhibit what what we call what a kind of what complex ion. I get it when they realize when they react with what when they react with halogen because this is carbon, this is halogen. You know basically we denote halogen by by x so what i'm trying to say is a simple question we have before us but because going forward we might need to understand some things for example now because of the d orbital in silicon germanium and the rest of the family you expect them to exhibit the plus two oxidation state and they can be easily hydrolyzed hydrolysis when you say they solve them in water you understand they accept electron carbon cannot accept more than four so they cannot form something like hexa hexafluoride or hexa whatever do you understand my point? So the maximum is four, which is a simple thing. So keep it in mind. But if you talk about germanium, germanium can exist as GeCl4. Then you have two minus. The same thing for tin, SnOH4, two minus. You understand? So in this case now, carbon cannot exhibit this type of situation because it cannot exceed its what its octet. You understand that so and because of that we say the hybridization in what in carbon is what sp3 hybridized i hope you know that tetravalent sp3 hybridized that is elementary i guess so because it is sp3 hybridized you expect the shape of sp3 i told you sp3 that is one plus three is a four one then three the power are four that is tetravalent so tetravalent element sp3 hybridized you know should be what tetra tetrahedron so that is talking about shape but whereas all this one that are that you see here they are forming complex you expect them to be sp3 d2 so sp3 d2 this is four plus two this is six so this is the configuration when they are in what plus two which carbon cannot actually see another chemical reaction i need to talk about before i move forward permit me guys i just need to talk is what they easily combine what all members we add 
all members react with oxygen to form oxides. So when we talk about oxides, oxide can be monooxides and dioxide. So let's say the members are M, they can form MO or MO2. So be careful about this. So they can form monooxides and dioxide. So be careful. So now, one thing you need to understand what is that what some important thing you can keep in mind is that silicon monooxide, silicon oxide, because we have silicon oxide, only exists, only exists at high temperature. Concept is important at high temperature. Please note that. Now, for example, then the classification of their oxide are now grouped into acidic, basic, and alphoteric, which I think I also need to talk about because of questions. Now, higher oxide in them, which are the one of dioxide and dioxide. Example we can list, we have carbon four oxide, CO2, SiO2, silicon four oxide. We have uh, germanium oxide. These are the higher oxide of this group. All these are said to be acidic oxides. Please write that down. It's important. We are asked if you have SNO2 and lead oxide, tin oxide and lead oxide are said to be amphoteric, just like beryllium oxide we talked about too. Amphoteric oxide you can keep it in mind. It's important. The amphoteric in nature and the monooxides like carbon monoxide. Are you there? Carbon monoxide is neutral. Talking about their member. Other, other, other family, other in other group, other neutral oxides are like nitrogen one oxide, which we call laughing gas, and uh, we have a uh, nitrogen oxide. And all these are neutral oxide. So what I'm trying to say is that higher oxide, CO2, SiO2, you know, carbon oxide, silicon oxide, and germanium oxide are acidic in nature. SNO2 and PbO2 are amphoteric in nature. You know the definition of amphoteric. And be, be careful about when somebody now asks you about monooxide too. Like for example, I ask you that uh, what type of oxide is GeO? Now I've told you that GeO2 is acidic. GeO2 should also be what? Acidic. Don't say this is not geographic. That is acidic in nature too. So all these things are very important for you to keep at the back of your mind. So it's acidic. So if I write SNO2, it respects and I told you the one that exists as a SNO and a PBO. This is also what amphoteric because when they combine with oxygen, they give you monoxide they will, and what and the di dioxide. So I don't want you guys to make any mistake when it comes to this. So for here, the exhibit to oxidation state of plus two and plus four will be the answer to this question. So we can move to the next slide. I've used 41 minutes now and I still have a long way to go. Now, I think I talk about this, the tendency to show plus two oxidation states. I told you it, is, it increases from germanium to what? To tin, then to, to lead. I told you about that. So I don't, need to, I don't need to waste time. That is why you need to watch the concept before you work with, you will follow the question. The next one should be, which of the following element cannot exceed its covalent more than four? We talk about the carbon is tetravalent, and because there's an absence of what? Of uh, this thing is hanging again. There's an absence of uh, the D orbital in carbon. The only orbital that is present in carbon is the S and P orbital. You can write it in but one S to two S to and what? And it should be two. And the abbreviation of carbon center atom in them is SP3 abbreviated. And that gives us a little tetrahedral shape. So let's move on because we still have a long way to go, to be honest. We have a very long way to go. This thing is loading. So very, very long. When I say very, very long way, I know what I'm talking about. So I think it's back. So this is the answer to this. So we can move to the next one. The next question says, elements other than carbon exceed their covalent more than four. The correct reason is because, I told you, this, they have what? They have the what? The presence of what? D or B orbitals. So which is not present in what? In carbon. Next question. The next question says, the hybridization of the central atom of uh, the species like SIFC2 minus, you can see in plus two oxidation state, and GECL2 minus, SNOH6 2 minus is, I told you about this, sp3d2 i talked about that and for carbon is only what sp3 
got us in this is HP3 D2. It's simple to know this thing from my knowledge of VSCPR. The next one is uh, members of group 14 element when heated with oxygen forms not only monoxide, they form both monoxide and dioxide. MO and MO2. I talked about that too. The next one. The next question is, which among the following only exists at high temperature? I talked about this too, talking about high temperature. I said SIO only exists at high temperature. So this is the answer to the question. Concepts talked about. Now it's time for you to pick answers to question. And you have to take note of what you do. Which of the following is acidic in nature? We talk about carbon four, that is acidic. SiO2 is acidic. GO2 is acidic. So the answer to this is all of these are acidic in nature talking about that conceptually too. The next question, which among the following is amphoteric in nature? We talk about it. this is acidic, no. This is amphoteric, this is amphoteric. And the answer to this question is option D. We can move to the next question. I hope students are getting this because I have talked about them. It's now easy for me to pick answers. And that is why I'm doing that directly. Which of the following monoxide of carbon family is neutral? Neutral is carbon monoxide, CO, N2O and NO are monoxide. Now, next one. Now, GEO, I told you, don't be fooled by what? By this is acidic. I told you about that, either the monoxide or the what? The dioxide. The next question. SNO and PBO are dash. SNO and PBO, SNO and PBO, amphoteric oxide. We talk about that, either the mono or the dioxide they are amphoteric so this is the answer the next question the member of group 14 which form the most acidic oxide is dash the answer is carbon acidic acidic nature decreases as you go down the group so keep that at the back of your mind carbon from the most acidic oxide the next question Okay, fine. Now we have PB plus four is dash in nature. PB plus four is dash dash in nature. Now we have to understand. I don't think this is a complete uh, question. So let's talk about some reaction with halogens. So let's talk about reaction with halogen. Reactions with halogen of the group fourteen element. So I think the the admin actually want to write PBI four PBI plus four. I think so, because that is the only thing that can make sense. Now, the elements combine with what? They combine with halogen. That is a group 14 plus halogen, group 14 plus halogen. Let's talk about halogen family is equals to halides. Remember that? Fine. So if you remember that, that should not be. So the halides can be MX2. I'm taking M as a member of the group, and it can also be MX4. Are you there? We are X is what? X is equals to halogens. So keep that in mind. Maybe I should write in black. So now, we we'll to talk about that. All the members combine what? All the members, all the members, except carbon, combine directly with halogen. All members, except carbon, combined, directly with halogens to form element. So carbon needs some condition or traveler tree. You remember substitution, reaction, in organic chemistry. I am not going into that. Please note that. I get it now. Now, always keep it in mind. Uh, the MX4, that is the member plus halogen that is having plus four OS state, oxidation state. They are said to what? They are said to be more covalent. They are covalent in nature. Covalent in nature. You know that carbon is covalent in nature. So note that. Now, the reason for their covalent is because they form what? Tetrahedra, hydra shape. I talked about that the other time. I just want to add, can you see tetrahedra? The hybridization of what? SP3 what? hybrid. Or sp3 hybridized so these are things that's like a common thing that got itself repeated in chemistry so you don't need to disturb your yourself i get it now so always keep it in mind that uh 
What I now want to give in mind is that they combine with what almost a member of the allergy, but BBI4 does not exist. And that is what I think the admin that is setting the question actually want to ask. BBI4 does not exist because the bond does not exist between lead and what? Iodine. So the amount of energy that is released by lead is not sufficient to combine with what? Allergy. So please note that. And I told you that what? Stability depends on oxidation state. So it is easy for you to know that if somebody asks you between germanium DX4 and G is to x means allergen which one is more stable you expect this to be more stable but the exception is for you to keep that pbs2 x is now not iodine because it does not combine with iodine it's more stable that's one exception than is more stable than pbs4 note that now another one is what all, all tetrachloride, tetrachloride means the one that has X4. All tetrachlorides can easily, can easily be hydrolyzed, except, except CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. You want. So note that. So that's another exception. So exception is what I want you to keep in mind. This is a good exception. PBS2 is more stable than PBS4. Whereas in order to expect the tetra allergen to be more stable than what the di allergen. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And these are things that what examiner we ask during what. And the reason for this one is because of the what long period. The central atom can only accommodate what can what accommodate what the lone pair from oxygen in others, but in this one, this one cannot accommodate because it cannot pass its what its boundary. I've talked about that before. So let's just move on. So I said this is PBI. So PBI does not exist, provided I guess right about what you want to ask. But there's nothing like PB4 is oxidizing, whatever. So it's out of it. So this is the answer. PBI, that is what PBI4 does not what does not exist the next question which of the following elements remain unaffected by water now let us talk about some reaction with water i think that is also some good reaction which you guys can also keep at the back of your mind now carbon silicon and germanium are what they don't react with water maybe i should keep a note carbon silicon and I hope you guys can see my handwriting. Carbon, silicon, and germanium are not affected by water. They are not affected by water. Water is H two O. I am taking this slow and steady. It is line by line. It is enough for you to pass any exam. To be honest, now, now, you can also write thing. That is SN. I write tin as SN. Tin decomposes tin. Tin decomposes tin to form dihydrogen and dioxide. What am I talking about? Let's write it. Tin is SN. Everybody knows this thing is loading again. Tin is SN. Everybody knows we are almost there. Tin is SN. We all know. So if we say SN, SN reacts with what? You can remember from your junior classes, reaction with cold water, re tin reacts with steam. It doesn't react with hot water and cold water. They only react with steam. So they decompose steam. Tin is SN plus H2O to give you SNO2 plus what? Hydrogen. So I'm writing now SN. I have to wait for that stuff to come up. Plus uh, water, two molecular water. Then the balance equation that is heat. Everybody knows the sign of this one. So you expect SNO2 plus uh, SNO2 plus hydrogen. So 
three molecules of hydrogen to balance the equation. I think it's balanced. Yes, it should be balanced. So note that. Another important thing you can also add, which is popular in your question, junior level, it's very common. This is also very common. Steam react with a steam react with, with steam. Now, is lead is unaffected by water. By water. That is, when you dissolve lead, PB plus water. Are you there? You say PBO2 plus H2. This PBO2 is now called, that is where I'm going because all these things are common, protective oxide. It's protect, so protective oxide film. So it forms, so they say this reaction is not possible. So it does not work because this is a protective layer of oxide, like film, that is formed on top of what? On top of the water. So it will not react with it. So it forms what? A protective oxide film. So this reaction is not correct. It's not visible. But we, in chemistry of action, when we miss, we tend to know that what? These are called. So this is a reaction of water, which is also part of the chemical reaction of uh, group 14. Reaction is RSN of this uh, 14 group. So you keep it trying to make chemistry easy for you guys. And that is why I'm trying to demystify it line by line. So the next one will be the answer to this, which of them is the of carbon does not react, silicon does not react, germanium does not react. Answer is all of these. And this is the correct answer. To it. The next one, we have a long way to go and it's a two hours video section. Team decomposes team to form, we talk about it. Dioxide and dihydrogen is answer. I don't need to waste time on this. 250th slide. We are going to 318 slide. We still have more than 58 questions left. The reaction I, I did the other time, remember? So this is what you know it. You know what it stands for SNO2 plus what H2. SNO2 plus H2 is the answer to this one. I don't need to waste my time on it. Now, why lead remain of unaffected by water? Because it's formed an oxide from yes, that is the answer. Protective layer of what of films are formed when you dissolve lead in water. The next one says, uh, which type of elites are formed by carbon family when they react with aluminum? I've done this one. Plus two and plus four is the oxidation state. So you expect this to be the answer. MS2, the member, I'm using M, MS2 and MS4. The next one, which of the following does not react directly with halogen to form a light? I talked about these two. If you are following me line by line, I would have talked about all this stuff. So the one that's not combined with halogen directly to form a light is carbon. And I told you that as well when I was explaining the simple concept, which I asked you to put that. The next one, the next question says, the shape of MX4 type of molecule, where MS is what? MS4 is sp3 hybridized. sp3 hybridized is what? Is what? Tetrahedra. So please keep that in mind. Direct answer. The next one, which among the following are ionic in nature? Now, maybe I didn't talk about this. Maybe I should quickly take you through this one. I told you that what? When you see most of the bond that is formed by group 14 elements are covalent, I talked about it, maybe not extensively, but as you move to tin, that is tin and lead. Tin and lead are metals. So they become electrovalent or ionic when they combine with what? Halogens. So keep note that. So if I write CCL4, I write a SIF4, but moment I write a SN and PB, both of them are metals. So metals of what? Metallic halides are ionic. That's what we are saying. Whereby non metallic halides are covalent. I hope you understand that. So this should be the answer to that. Both B and C are correct. I hope you understand this. It's a simple story. Maybe not simple, but it's simple now because. I have explained extensively. I hope you guys are getting this. So, every members of group 14 from germanium to lead are able to form a light of now they form a light of MS4 and MS2. Yes, the reason is because, and I told you, those one don't form our carbon, don't form CS2 or whatever because of what because of the state turbulence. It cannot exist and it doesn't have a D of the time. All these are very important for you to be remembered. The next one is uh,
in group 14, the stability of thy elite, you expect it towards towards stability. I told you about stability. Stability. How this what form what how the what some important uh things of what thy elite. The you expect carbon to be more stable. So then the next one, then the next one. So you expect it to decrease as you are moving down the group. So this is, will be the correct answer. So that should not be a problem to get. The next one. <laughs> now, with respect to the stability of a light of group 14, which of the following is correct? I told you about this also when I was explaining concept wise. I said GS4 is more stable because of more oxidation state. Well, there is an exception. PBS2 is more stable than PBX4. So the answer to this line by line teaching is both A and B. And I think we can move to the next question. Now, about the next question, we have uh, the next question asks us uh, which of the following tetrachloride of carbon is not easily hydrolyzed? I talked about this, and that is the answer to nothing to talk about there. I've explained the concept. The next one is wow. Now, let's see this. Given the reaction we have here, now if you check this reaction, this is cloning, 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 SiCl4. Now it's reacting with water. This we do need to know here. And this is what I was talking about because of the presence of D orbital. So they are going to form what? SiOH. SiOH4. So because it's going to accept, please note that. So this is one of the what? Hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis reaction of what? SiCl4. To minus. So please note that since so you S I then all this guy is going to be changed. This is the bond that you are going to want. Let me draw. I can draw for you just because of time. To so draw is simple O H O H O H then O H. So this is what is going to be formed. And this guy is called silicic acid. Silicic acid. It is called silicic acid. I don't want to exceed my time, and that is why I'm trying to work with time. So silicic acid, SiOH4 is formed, and that is the answer to this. So this is, and I told you about the hybridization. I talked about that. You have to understand this one because what they have the ability to accept pair of electron donor because this is donating, they will accept. So and how they accept is shown here to so form what silicic. So keep this in mind because a lot of questions can also come in this type of reaction. You know, carbon cannot undergo this type of reaction because there is no what D committed. I hope you are there with me. So we can talk about the next question now. Two hundred and sixty-one slide. See how long I'm going to go. Now this is more than fifty questions left. The chemical formula for silicic acid is this. I think I talked about that just now. The next question. We want to increase our pace. Carbon differ from the rest of the group member because I told you every first member of the of what of each family, the 14 family, they have what they have small size. I've talked about this at the beginning, and it's just coming now. They have high ionization energy or enthalpy and what and high electron what electronegativity. They what they what absence of uh, I talked about all this thing, absence of d orbital. All these are characteristics of the anomalous behavior of the first member of carbon. So now this is correct, this is correct, this is correct, and this is correct. So that's the answer to that. The next question. The next question is this carbon as dash. This is high energy and high electronegativity. We just talked about that. Next question, please. Now, the orbital which are available for bonding in carbon is dash. Now, talking about some important thing about carbon, I hope you guys know this, carbon and its family and whatever. Now, carbon only, uh, you have to wait for this to come up. When you write the configuration of carbon, carbon don't have the orbital, it's only the S and P orbital are available. So carbon can only accept only four pairs of electron. Why waiting for this? I can talk and you can hear me. And because they can have that, that is what they are, they, there will be a limit to their covalence. You note that because of the presence of that particular 
property. So I can talk about a little bit more about cover. I think we want to talk, start talking about the major thing now, the major element, which is what you guys need. That is why I always say you have to watch this video till the end. It's important to watch it till the end. So the only available is what the S and the P orbital because of the concept of tetravalency in carbon. Discuss about that. So carbon also shows some unique property as a unique property. Let me quickly talk about it. I'm sorry. I have two hours. I've used one hour, three minutes. So I have to increase my space now. Unique property is common in carbon. The unique properties I should have asked go for IES. Uh, the first one is carbon has a tendency to form what we call a P pi P pi bond. Please listen. P pi P pi bond is common in what carbon family in carbon. That is multiple bond P pi P by multiple bond with itself and other. Are you with me? Atoms of small size. And uh, I electronegativity. So that means I'm saying carbon can form carbon carbon with itself. Carbon can form carbon highly electronegative when oxygen FO in Cl S. Carbon can form, are you with me? With sulfur. So this type of reaction can also form with what nitrogen, small size double bond. And when you have nitrogen, you expect nitrogen. Ocean. I'm not going into that. So that is a uh, carbon forming what P pi P pi bond within itself. And this P pi P pi bond is not present in other members of the group because they have large atomic size. Only carbon has this unique property. I hope you are with me. So this unique property of carbon is not common to silicon, germanium, lead, and tin, or tin and lead because of what they have what. The orbitals are too large. And because of what? Large orbitals, they don't form P pi B pi. Large orbitals. And uh, effective overlap. Large orbitals and effective over overlap. So what I'm saying in essence, my dear student, is that keep it in mind. The only bond that is available here is uh, for carbon is the s and p orbital the configuration is one s2 two s2 and two b which is a simple question but we just need to talk about more things you know this is not just an o level class it is for basically for what high standard of education that is a level neat exams school exams and the rest so please uh the next thing another special property apart from people is the catenation which you guys have studied also in junior classes catenation of carbon now, that is the property by which carbon can bond with itself. Now, the bond of carbon and carbon is said to be very strong. And this is the reason why by what catenation occurs. Excuse me. Now, catenation occurs because of the strong bond. The ability of, of carbon to bond with itself or to form a long chain is called catenation, junior classes. So as you go down the group, you expect the catenation done. As you are moving down the globe, you expect the catenation to decrease because of what? Because of the electronegativity. Are you getting it? So these are simple. So understanding this catenation is another special property. P pi P pi bond and also catenation is common to carbon only. And uh, what catenation decreases down the group. It is carbon show more catenation than any other bond. You can also keep in mind that lead does not show PB lead does not show, does not show catenation. Please note that. So note that it's very important. You can also keep in mind that order of catenation is written as carbon is very, very greater than silicon. I love to write my very, very greater like that. You are used to my class. Whereby silicon is greater than germanium and germanium is very close to what is equal to what tin. I said let us not work. This is talking about catenation. And keep it, these are some special properties which you can keep in mind. So because of this catenation of carbon, and we're talking about some characteristics of carbon, which you have studied in junior classes, because of this catenation of carbon, carbon show carbon shows allotropes. 
Another name for allotropes is polymorphism. So which is the ability of what an element to exhibit different forms without changing their physical state, junior classes. So now here, the only bond present in the carbon for bonding is S and P. This is the answer to this question. Let's move before we talk more about allotrope of carbon and some other things we need to know. So let's answer this. The next one says, which among the following has the unique ability of P pi P bar? That is carbon. I think we can quickly move on. The next one is, which of the elements has the ability to show catenation? Answer is also carbon. Next question. Why does carbon show catenation? Because what the carbon carbon lengths are very strong. I talk about this. That is the answer as well. You can see the way you answer chemistry question. Well, you know it well. In carbon family, the tendency to show catenation it will decrease. It decreases. I hope you understand because of electronegativity. So that's the answer. Then the next one ask the correct order of catenation in carbon is dash. I told you carbon is greater than silicon, greater than diamond. Diamond is very almost approximately equal to T. So this is the answer. As left does not show catenation. You can see we're able to conquer those set of questions. And here we have what kind of allotro form are shown in carbon. So now that is talking about allotrope. Now let's quickly talk about the allotrope of carbon. Junior classes. So that means we are close to carbon and uh, to some things we need to know about carbon. I hope you guys are here. So now when we talk about allotrope of carbon, allotrope of carbon are classified into two. Basic classic, crystalline and non-crystalline. So these are the two classification of the allotropes of carbon. Crystalline and non-crystalline is also called amorphous. I hope my spelling, amorphous carbon or amorphous carbon. Junior classes, you have studied a lot about this. Crystalline is a diamond. Please keep it in mind. Now in A-level class, graphite. And the third one is fullerene. In fact, the self learning is the highest molecule of carbon atom. It's called C60. Though some people are still debating it can exist in C80. It was discovered by some scientists. I think three of them. I don't I can't recall the name. Maybe it's Molly and some other thing. So, but one thing you keep in mind is that nobody asked about name. Keep that in mind. So diamond graphite and fullerenes are the crystalline. How about the amorphous carbon and the non-crystalline set of what allotropes or so we can now talk about each of them because I know examiner will ask lots and lots of questions about all these guys. Now, in, in, in junior classes, because diamond is said to be the hard substance known. I hope you still remember this. Diamond is the hard substance, uh, is the hardest substance known. You still remember that. So it's a it's from what we call a crystalline lattice. That is it is hard. So in each of the dimension of a uh, diamond, you have uh, the carbon atom, the carbon atom undergoes sp3 hybrid. And I say hybrid, I mean hybridization. And they are linked, and they are linked to four other, to four others i hope you can see my handwriting to four other carbon atoms so now this is what i'm trying to say most of the diagram diagram not drawn to scale just if you want to you can go online and see how the molecule look like so if you have this is carbon let's say this is one carbon now so you expect it to link with another see one two then the third one always come out like this then the next one we also form the same thing if this is the next carbon wow this thing is loading again i have to wait for it to come up so now the next carbon we also form that is the way they link together so the center atom is said to be sp3 hybridized the shape of the whole configuration is said to be octahedra from junior classes if you still remember all these basic basic things they are very important for you to study that is why i'm taking my time to make sure 
you get them up. I am waiting for this black spot to get away from my slide so that I can write well. So I think it has gone. So if we have the next carbon, you, you expect that one also to combine with what? Another what? Another four. That is a one, two, three, four. Then again, this is C carbon. It will move with another four. So it will come down like this. Then this one, another carbon now. We expect it to go one, two, one, two, three, then the fourth one. That is the way it moves. That is the way they move. So the one that was here, also we follow the same method. Then you have something like the, the ring shape. That is the way carbon carbon atom are what are arranged in that. So they say the length between this carbon and the length carbon, the carbon what the the carbon carbon length in diamond. I'm trying to draw diamond. The shape generally is an octahedral shape. Like I said, if you want to check uh, the ring shape, you continue drawing like that, four, 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 four. So each of the carbon center atom is sp3 hybridized. Please note that sp3 hybridized, hybrid, hybrid. So, and because of that, you know the shape of SP3 as tetrahedra, tetra, tetra. So, keep that in mind. It's very important. So, my point is the car, the, the length between the first carbon and the next carbon atom is said to be 154. Let me use a red. The carbon length between carbon and carbon is 154 picometer. We write picometer as PM. So, that is the length, carbon length between molecule of. Uh, of uh, of diamond. I hope you you guys still remember. Now it is very difficult to break because there is what covalent what covalent bond exists between the covalent bond. Definitely carbon is there. You expect covalent bond. So most of the carbon, most of our diamond are used as a are used as a sharpening tool tools. Time is not 4 15. I have 45 minutes more. Sharpening tools. They are used for sharpening tools. You know, they are very difficult to get because of the covenant bond that is holding them. You know that. So keep that in, in the back. They can also be used in making dyes. Making dyes. You can keep that in mind. And uh, they also use them basically in making what we call. Some bulbs that is stone steam bulbs, stone steam bulbs, yes, stone steam bulbs, or is it filament bulb? Some filament bulb. So that's one of the major. So most of the they made so they are used as sharpening tools. So you know they are very hard. So they use them as an abrasive substance. They are hard because they were they contain covalent bond between their molecules. But you might ask me that why is why is uh diamond what diamond is covalent and you expect covalent bond to be what to be soft. But why are they because they have what they have what high melting bond. Diamond also have what high melting high melting bond. So these are things you've studied before in your junior classes, which I believe you study. So there. They contain both amorphous and crystalline will be the answer to this. So let's increase the pace, 270 slides out of 315 or 318. The crystalline form of carbons are <clears throat> diamond and graphite. Fullerenes is also correct. So the answer is both A and B. But I told you the crystalline form are diamond, graphite, and fullerenes. The next one, the abelian of carbon atom in diamond is sp 3 I told you when I drew the structure, atom R S P three hybridized. Now the next question. I mean, I need to talk about the next. Okay, the structure of hybridized carbon. Please be careful about this hybridized carbon, which is what S P three was asked. They ask you for the structure of diamond. If the question is structure of diamond is octahedra, then the question here asks for the structure of the carbon atom that is hybridized. And that is tetrahedra because it is sp3. sp3 are always what tetrahedra in in shape. I hope you get all these things. They are very important for you to get. The next one we talk about this as well too. Yes, we talk about it. They said in the structure of them, the carbon carbon bond length is I told you 154 picometer is the right answer to this. The next one in structure of diamond dash are present in lattice 
they have a kind of what covalent bond and their covalent bond is following a particular direction that's when i do them so you expect to pick a what covalent bond you can never pick ionic because you know ionic does not exist in carbon covalent bond directional covalent bond will be the answer to this question that's that the next one the allotrope of carbon used for used as abrasive for sharpening of tools add metals diamond so i think that should be all for diamond maybe we should go to the next allotrope very good. now graphite now the next allotropes which is crystalline we talk about diamond graphite and fullerenes now now we talk about the second allotrope which is uh graphite basically in junior classes your teacher will tell you that graphite is a carbon allotrope that can conduct electricity they conduct electricity why is because because they have a layered structure layered structures one thing about graphite if you don't know is that the structures are layered and because they are layered they are now held by van der Waal, held by van der van der Waal force so you know it's weakest force of attraction and the distance between them is said to be about 340 picometer as the distance between the shape the shape is said to be hexagonal junior classes this is the way they look like maybe i can try and draw i draw an hexagon an hexagon with an hexagon that is just what i want to draw but basically can i use my app here to draw because of time i'm just in case that's just the problem let me see if i can make this hexagon something like this or uh, the way this one will be drawing i wouldn't like it it's too big this is the way the layers are being structured just for you to see so then the next one the next one will also be this we have uh I'm not going to scale. I'm sorry. So now these are the points. It will go like that. The next one will come under it like this. Wow. It should case like that. Then they are arranging that pattern because of time permits me, guys. I'm sorry. I have to just finish up this thing I have. So these are the carbon carbon arrangement. So you can see it's like an hexagon. So the gap between the first one, this is like, and if you want to arrange this one, this is the next carbon, you know it is hexagonal, six by six. That is what we call uh, six, then it goes. So if the next one is coming, the arrangement will be, we have the next pattern, we now start again from here. Then you just take one more understanding sleep because what's the essence of teaching when you guys are not getting what i'm what i'm trying to explain should be okay that's this will be the next one that is the way it is then it will now continue going so the length we are talking about that is 340 picometer is between the first one the way they are arranged on top of each other the next one we also gap itself like that wow you also gap itself like that, then you also arrange like that. So the gap between the carbon and carbon here is what we call as 340 picometer. That is the vertical gap. The horizontal gap is not 340. I think the horizontal gap is 140.5 or 141.5. I think it's 141.5. That is 141.5. So 141.5 picometer. So be careful because questions sometimes in A level can test you about this, and most of you are you have actually memorized all this. So there are other things I can talk about, carbon, carbon atom in there. Other things is that what, they have free mobile electron, 
that are moving around, it's hanging. Now they have free mobile electrons that move around, so that is why they conduct what? Electricity. Layer structure, which also, wow, which makes them to have a free mobile. Yeah, I think I'm back. So free mobile, free mobile electrons, We keep that in mind, it's very important. I'm talking about the hybridization. It's very simple to see. You can see the way they are arranged. So you don't need to disturb yourself. The hybridization will be SP2. And when you see SP2, you know what it means? Triagonal, triagonal planet. SP2s are triagonal planet. Time is not on my side. That is why I'm rushing. So another important thing I think I need to talk about is uh, the standard entropy or standard heat of formation of graphite is what is zero. So because of that, they said uh, graphite is thermodynamically stable. Time thermodynamically stable. So it is the only allotrope of what the only allotrope of power that is thermodynamically stable. We can also keep that at the back of your mind. It's not that. So because of that, because the conduct electricity they are also very soft physical property junior glasses they are soft and they are slippery they are soft and they are they have layer structure you swear them both so they are majorly used as what try lubricant they are majorly used as try lubricant so please so because of their what because what because of their low melting point, high melting point, you expect them to use as training. So, guys, that is just that about that. So, let's answer the following question with respect to graphite and see if we can answer it. So, graphite has layer structured. I think we talked about that. It's still here. So, that's the answer to that. The next one. Graphite has layers. These layers are held by Van der Waal force. We've talked about that. The next one. Time is not my side. The distance between two layers of graphite, that is uh, 340 picometer. I talked about that, the first layer and the second layer. Please be careful about that. Now, the next one, each layer of graphite structure is composed of what? Hexagonal. Hexagonal, they are what? They are planar. So hexagonal, planar hexagonal ring, they are hexagonal in shape. I drew that. Because the hexagon is still here, as you can see. The next one, the hybridation of the carbon atom of the hexagonal, I told you, SP2 hybridized is the answer, and that is triagonal plan now. The next one, why is graphite a good conductor of electricity? They have mobile electron, they have pentagonal, they have hexagonal. They, it has very high hydration enthalpy. Well. So the answer to this is this, and that is why they conduct electricity. The next one, Graphite cleaves easily between layers, and therefore it is dashed. When this is more like an English question, when something cleaved, we said graphite is soft and it's also what slippery. Part of the characteristics, and that is why they cleave the cleaves around the layers of what layers of what of themselves. Now the next thing, the next question, which is thermodynamically stable we talk about that and that is the answer to that and i think that is all for graphite maybe the next one should be following now about following i'm going to be talking about some things which i think almost everybody needs to write down because it's not that common for questions nowadays are coming especially in a level and neat question so we have to just to be careful about understanding it i said it is the third member of the crystalline form of the allotrope of carbon allotropes of carbons are diamond graphite and uh, for learning, that is crystalline. Non crystalline are amorphous carbon, which you have studied a lot in your junior classes. Now, fullerene or fullerene, as the case may be, I said the molecule of fullerene, the highest molecule is what? Of carbon, which is written as C6. Please note that. They are basically made by eating graphite. For fullerene, let me write some concept. Fullerene are made by eating 
graphite with inert gas. Short concept, inert gas, which is needed for you to pass exam. So keep it in mind. So that's that. So I told you the highest for now, the highest is said to be. So the molecule are said to be molecule of fullerenes of fullerenes are ag like structure. ag like structure. Fullerenes look like ball, just like a ball, a ball shape, something like a ball shape. In fact, they call it black mister fullerenes. That's the name it is generally called. Black mister fullerenes. So it has a kind of a 26 molecules of ring, or let's just say 26, 26 <laughs> ring and 12, 5 non membered ring. The structure is like a ball. It has a ball-like structure, all right? That a ball-like structure, a ball-like structure. I'll try and draw it for, so because of that, I said the highest molecule is 60, so you expect it to have 60 vertices. I'll not draw the 60 vertices just for you to see the way the stocks actually look like. So the carbon-carbon distance, that is the type of carbon-carbon it's going to be asked to, that is common in needs is 143.5 picometer. That's the distance. And uh, it is spherical. When I say spherical, that is ball like You understand? So I don't even know. Maybe I will be able to draw this because I don't think I don't have anything that can give me that particular shape. But uh, I said uh, 12, 6 ring. I need 12. I see 12. So this is the way the 12 ring actually look like. And inside the 12 ring, can I actually do this? Let's see. And I have, uh, it should be more than this. Something similar to this, right? So this is more like how the four lenses look like. And these are things we need to understand in it. It is uh, not that uh, common. These are major things you can keep in mind for now. I don't think I need to talk more than this for now. I think it's okay for you to answer most of the questions that will be asked with respect to it. So for the reason, uh, KG like is the answer to this. The next question, I have to increase 29 minutes more. In both Mr. For learning, that's the name, carbon undergone dash hybridization. Okay, maybe I didn't talk about it. The hybridization in them is also SP2 hybrid, just like your graphite. You understand? Just like graphite, I should talk about it. Didn't I talk about hybrid? Because I know I used to talk, I didn't talk about it. So please, it's SP2 hybrid. That's the next one. So now, in both Mr. Foley and in each carbon atoms form dash sigma bond. Now, they form, I didn't talk about these two, they form three sigma bond. Fullerenes or fullerenes, this and how you call it, formed three sigma bond. Please, it's, it's very important, and they are what sp2, please, hybridized, hybrid, hybridization, hybridized. They form three sigma bond. Three sigma bond. So please, it's important to keep that in mind. Three sigma bond. So that's that about that. The next one. Spherical fullerene fullerenes are also known as, I talked about this, they are called bulky balls. I talk about that. So this is the answer to that. The next one. Yeah, these are Concept of amorphous carbon now. Amorphous carbon, which I think is also very important, and some other compound of carbon. So let's quickly talk about some concepts we need to know about amorphous carbon. Time is not on my side. This 289 page. That means we need to move at our highest pace. So note that. Now, 
carbon, carbon, I'm of course carbon. There are lots of examples from junior classes. I'm going to talk about important ones, which I think uh, you guys need to just keep at the back of your mind. So now we have uh, a lot of them, like I said, there are a lot of them, a lot of them. So, but you have to just keep in mind, I only talk about few ones. So I'll talk about carbon black or my word. This thing is still loading when I'm going to start talking. Excuse me, carbon black. Carbon black is used as black, black, black pigment. They are used as a fillers of chiasm, you know, black, carbon black. So most of them are formed from uh, carbon black. Is used as pigment. Those are examples of amorphous carbon. Now, I will talk about their preparation to it, but because of time, I may jump something that is pigment like black ink. They can also be used as fillers, fillers in tires. So please note that. Now, another amorphous carbon which you can keep in mind is coke. Coke is used as fuel. Coke is used as fuels and uh, as a reducing agent. Remember that in black furnace, have you? extraction of metal in extraction, extraction of metals. You remember that too. Remember that. So note that. So now. About the preparation, because it's important we talk about some preparation of uh, all these things. Now, other things you can keep in mind, we also have what we call coal tar, coal gas, ammoniaca liquor, that is liquid. When I say liquid, liquid, is, all these are solid. So please note that all these are produced from destructive distillation. Destructive distillation of coal. So, eating coal, the definition is eating coal in the absence of air. Air is not there. Note that. But when you want to produce carbon, it is what? Eating hydrocarbon. That's the difference. Please keep it in mind. Eating hydrocarbon with limited supply of air, limited air. So that's the difference between carbon black is not produced from destructive definition of coal. You can also destruct, uh, perform destructive definition of wood, water, wood gas, pyrogallic acid, and so on, elementary knowledge. So I'm not talking about that for now. So what you need to keep in mind about the amorphous carbon, they are in pure form of carbon, and that is why they are not crystallized. So this is the answer to the question. We can uh, move to the Next question. The next question will be question. We need to increase the pace. I have <laughs> 24 minutes. But carbon black is formed by, look at this. I talk about this now. Boiling, boiling hydrocarbon with limited amount of air should be the answer to this. Direct answer. Let's try to be right. The next question. Charcoal and coke are obtained by destructive distillation. You know that. Eating wood of coal with what? Limited supply of air. In the absence of air, a bit destructive, destructive distillation. Next question: Carbon form oxide in two oxidations, a plus two and plus four. We've talked about OS of carbon. No need to waste time. Next one: Direct oxygen of carbon in limited supply of air. Quick concept, or this is now concept on our uh, oxide. Compounds of carbon now. So some important concerns of that is carbon monoxide right as CO and carbon fourxide right as CO2. So maybe there are two important uh, carbon-like structure, carbon monoxide and carbon fourxide. So when carbon is heated with limited supply of air, please, I'm begging you guys, I have to be very fast. Carbon with limited supply of air is said to be what? to give you carbon monoxide, limited supply. You have carbon monoxide, which is also a gas. So limited supply. 
supply of a concept wise now and that is only produced on this now then if you want to produce these are uh, carbon monoxide on a small scale on a small scale concept wise now on a small scale the time i hope it will be enough for me what we do is just what dehydration dehydration this is common dehydration of uh, formic acid i also don't know formic acid formic acid formic acid is hc methanoic acid hcoh in the presence of In the presence of uh, H2SO4 and heat. The heat is about 373 Kelvin. You can just write HCOOH with your, you eat this in the presence of H2SO4 as a dehydrating agent, then you are going to have H2O plus CO. We can see that's how this is prepared. So now, but if we want to prepare this guy on a commercial scale, On a commercial scale, you want to produce a uh, carbon monoxide. What we use is what is what it is prepared by what by passing. You can write all these a uh, concept before I, passing of uh, steam over red hot coke, red hot coke, red hot coke, and steam over red hot coke to give you a gas we call water gas, which is also called synthesis gas synthesis gas so steam everybody knows steam coke is c s is solid steam is h2o gas so we are passing carbon over steam that is why it's in gaseous form then you are going to have carbon monoxide is gas and hydrogen so these two combination of elements are called water gas or synthesis gas I hope you understand now but another thing is there's another thing we call a producer gas now how is producer gas for because these are things you see in questions now producer gas is what is now formed by replacing the moment you replace i hope you can see what i'm writing i hope i am not cutting replace steam with air when you replace steam with air for example look at the reaction carbon solid Combining with instead of steam, which is water gas, we are going to have air, air is O2, which is also a gas, and you mix some amount of nitrogen N2 with it. So you are going to have the product at CO plus N2, which is called producer gas. I did not balance. If you want to balance, you can balance two. Two twos are four. This is balanced. I think it's balanced, and this will be four four this is a gas so producer gas is a mixture of carbon monoxide and nitrogen water gas is a mixture of uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen so the only difference between them is what the present steam which what air you produce what producer gas and so on and so forth so keep that at the back of your mind now carbon monoxide is colorless odorless and tasteless some physical property quick one colorless odorless and slightly soluble in water so you can write that slightly solo in water. So basic characteristics. Let me answer a question. Direct oxidation will leave less of is carbon monoxide. So this is the answer to this. Next question. Time is not on my side. And I have to finish everything. Now, given the reaction below, this is the reaction I talked about. So this is the answer. Limited supply of air. That is why it's, you can see it. On a small scale, CO is produced by what? Formic acid. I told you about formic acid, not acetic acid. Please note that formic acid is HCOH, which was concentrated H2SO4, not diluted at this temperature. So this is the answer. The next question is uh, the reaction we talked about. I've written this one. This is a dehydrating agent. Because it's a dehydrating agent, it will remove water. When it's removed water, what are you left with? We've written this reaction. I don't need to be writing water and what and CO, CO and water. Answer. Next is this. The same reaction. Carbon. Now I told you when carbon is passed under what red hot what red steam is passed under red hot coke. You are going to have synthesis gas or what? What? The water gas. 
What is water, gas, carbon monoxide, and what? And hydrogen. Please don't make don't make mistake. This is the answer to that. The next one. The mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is for synthesis gas or water gas. So this is the answer. The next question. Wow. Next question. This thing is still wasting my time when I don't have time. 17 minutes more. Can I finish? I'm waiting for this thing to come up. Hopefully it will come up now. Wow, loading, 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 loading. So guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the class. Just make sure you watch it to the end because there are a lot of things you still need to learn. So I think we have uh, the question jumped. When air is passed over right now, if you change the word steam to air, producer gas is going to be formed. So this is the answer to this. Then the producer gas equation is the next question because I've seen it plus when you mix it with N2. So you expect what carbon monoxide and nitrogen. So this is the answer for the producer gas. The next question, I think we have 30 something question more or left. Now the next question is CO in water, CO in water gas or producer gas can undergo combustion to form, you know, that's something is CO. If you undergo combustion, it will give you CO2. It goes with, and when CO2 is left, then there will be what plus heat. Whenever you see triangle, it means heat has been given out. So when you what undergo combustion as CO plus O, as with more oxygen, we what we liberate it. CO2 will be formed and it will be liberated. Liberated. The next question. 60 minutes. Which of the following is true regarding carbon monoxide? Colorless or dollars, correct. Almost in solution and water, both A and B will be the correct answer. I hope you understand that we've talked about that. The next one. Which variety of CO is used in the extraction of metal? I told you reducing property of metallurgy. There will be a couple of reactions we can quickly write if you want us to write. In the blast furnace, iron ore, ametite, right? Ametite is solid. When you combine it with what? CO gas, it's going to give you iron plus uh, carbon dioxide. You can balance that. At your leisure, CO is acting as what a reducing agent. You remember this reaction? Extraction of metal. Next one. Next question. Exactly the reaction I just finished writing. What is X and Y? That is ion and what and CO2. Ion and CO2, not ion oxide. So this is the answer. Option C is correct. Next one. Carbon dioxide is prepared, now we are in CO2. So the next compound, next compound of carbon is of CO2, line by line. It's not easy to do this type of video, but because it's requested and because you guys demand for it and exam is near, we have to make sure we help you line by line. That is why it is kind of lengthy. So you have to watch it to the end for full concept, for full understanding, for full knowledge. Now, basically, Carbon four oxide is prepared by combustion. It's prepared directly by combustion of carbon. Combustion of carbon in excess of of N. So that is just the way. Just say carbon plus excess of N. Then it's going to give you CO CO two gas. You know what I mean? So now, another way of preparing it, apart from that, is also from, we can also prepare it from what? Hydrocarbon. It produces to work from what? From hydrocarbons. So it can also be prepared from hydrocarbons. Because of this question itself, hydrocarbons. That is combustion of hydrocarbons. So CH4 plus O2. Combustion reaction always give you carbon four oxide and water. You balance. You can see CO2 is also being produced. So these are the two ways we prepare it directly. But if you want to prepare it in uh, the laboratory, the method we use is the met basic method we've learned in junior classes is by combining dilute HCl with limestone. Carbon three is limestone. We see the CO3. 
So when you miss that, you are going to have what? The properties. This is the reaction for those who want to know. Plus HCl. I have 12 minutes more. Please balance the equation. CaCl2 plus water plus CO2. This is the way we put it in the laboratory. Preparation. So this is the way we prepare it in the laboratory. So now, but if you want to prepare it directly on a commercial scale, it is prepared by decomposition of CaCO3. If you decompose this one, you know CaO plus what plus CO2. So all these are very, very important for you to keep in mind. And about CO2 too, it is colorless, it is odorless, it is slightly soluble in water. Slightly soluble in water. Then it has it is what it combines. We can also keep it. It's it's what it's it's it's, it's dissolving water. You say slightly soluble in water to form carbonate or by by carbonate dissolving water because it is what a weak acid. When it dissolves in water, it forms carbonate. For example, water plus uh, plus CaCl plus uh, CO two. CO2, hope I'm not writing on myself, plus water is going to give you H2CO3, which is called, this is called carbonate. Carbonate or carbonic acid. Carbonic acid. So this carbonate here is said to be acidic in nature. It is acidic in nature and it is diabetic from your knowledge of. Uh, what do we call that? Uh, talking about basicity of acid. This is the basic. I will take the topic, don't worry. Common ion effect. And I will talk about everything you need to know. So it is the basic, as you can see, because there are two replaceable hydrogen ions. See, so this is the basic in nature. So now, here, not to waste time, then if it's ionized, it's ionized in two forms. You can see H2CO3. You know the meaning of ionized? It's an, in an aqueous form. If it's ionized, it's going to give us reversible reaction. It is HCO3 minus plus ozonium ion. I hope you guys know ozonium ion very well. Then the second way in which it can ionize is this HCO3 minus that is formed can also dissolve in water. Apologies, this is 10 minutes to the end of my section and I have to finish. And I know admin will not give me more than five minutes extra. So that is why I'm what I'm moving. So it will now give you carbonate. Then plus what? Ozonium ion, H3O plus. So this is the way it's ionized. So you can keep it in at the back of your mind. So when it's ionized, it's formed HCO3 minus or H2CO3, which buffer the system to maintain the pH between seven. Buffer solution, you know, pH of a buffer solution, pH of the blood should be seven. So it is because of this, it allows what H2CO3 reacts with the blood to make it to maintain its neutrality, its stability to be neutral, to be between the range of 7.2 to 7.4. So note that it's an acidic oxide diabase combined with base, combined with base to form metacarbonate. That's another reaction combined with base to form meta carbonate as another reaction because you can say co2 will be the meta plus co2 will be what in this child now carbon oxide is prepared by this is correct this is also correct for my explanation both a and b is correct either from hydrocarbon or from ss what supply of oxygen the next question you have to move this is more like what i talked about carbon solid combined with this so because we have talked about this and the second reaction is asking for this is co2 this is hydrocarbon which is what methane so answer the next one in the laboratory method is prepared by i told you it's dilute hydrochloric acid on calcium carbonate not concentrated please the next one on commercial scale, CO2 is prepared by this is eating CO3. 
Next one. Which of the following is correct with respect to carbon fiber? It is colorless, odorless, it has loose stability in water, it's formed carbonic acid, HCO3 or H2CO3. So the answer is all of these. We've talked about that. The next one. Carbonic acid are diabetic. We talked about that too. I hope you guys are following H2CO3. The number of replaceable hydrogen ion is two. You can see that. Next one. Or is that all? I hope that is all. I just pray that is all. Ask my prayer that this is all so that we can move on. But I don't think it's, I think it's loading. But we, we should still have a silicon. And that's not even all for this. Waiting. Wow, it's still loading. Hopefully it will go now. Wow. So which of the following is correct regarding carbonate? The buffer, yes, is correct. It is an acidic, it is acidic in nature. It's combined with alkali to form better carbonate. Those are the properties of H2CO3. So this is the answer. The next question. Given this reaction, this is more like a reaction that is popular. Please note. Other things I can talk about is CO2 is not is not poisonous. CO is poisonous because it's real with the red blood cell, red blood cell, RBC, to form carboxyhemoglobin. So, but one thing about CO2 is we need to know CO2 also combined. This is this is glucose, you know, this is more like photosynthesis reaction. You guys recall that this is glucose. This is the answer. Biology students should be able to answer this. But one thing I want to talk about is that uh, we also need to understand. Is that uh, recently you might see in some of your questions that they talk about uh, the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. When there is too much of CO2 in the atmosphere, it leads to what? The increase in greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. I hope you guys have heard about that. Greenhouse effect. So, and greenhouse effect raises the temperature raise important word raise temperature of the atmosphere so which can now lead to what a lot of what consequences acid rain and the rest and whatever whatever you want to talk about because of time five minutes more which is not going to be enough so sometimes we say co2 can also act as a pollutant in some cases because it leads to too much of co2 in the atmosphere from greenhouse effect I hope you understand that. So that's that. Or just just to add that bonus to what you need to learn. That's why I'm talking about it. Then dry CO2 is called uh, solid CO2. Solid carbon dioxide is called dry ice. On that, uh, in the uh, introduction to chemistry, talking talking about changes physical and separation techniques, we talk about this one. It can sublime. Sublimes easily. At least it is solid. It can move directly to. Gases. I hope you understand. So please, I am rushing now because I'm almost at the end of this something. So this cell dry eyes is actually used majorly for they are used as a refrigerant. Refrigerant. Because you can have question asking you on the, the importance of our dry eyes. So I have four minutes more plus the five minutes that will be give me. But I mean it's laugh, laughing here. But one thing I want you guys to know is this. Uh, you just need to understand that what dry ice is formed by liquefying, by liquefaction, by liquefying, liquefaction. So now when you allow what you allow CO2 gas to liquefy. Amid my spelling, guys, liquefied by rapid expansion. By rapid expansion. So I just want to talk about what is needed. So it is solid CO2 we call dry ice. I don't think we have to waste too much of time on that. The next one, we are almost there. And me, dry ice is obtained by Rapid expansion of liquefied CO2. 
I just talked about that now. So that is why I took a pause. The next question. The next one is uh, the gas that is used in manufacturing of urea. So I'm using of CO2. The one that is here. Yes. Urea manufacturing. CO2 is also used. Uh, it is used by plant for photosynthesis. It is used by for as fire esting, 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 wishes. I just want to recall important usage. Please. They are also used as a, which other thing? They, they are also used by, by plants to generate food. That's a photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. I meant my spelling as I say that a minute to the time it was five minutes, I mean six minutes more. So the carbon dioxide also has a, a kind of, uh, maybe I should talk about that, linear shape. It has a linear shape. Please note that when it is linear, you know this shape with what? SP. Then it's a form, it forms what? Resonance. A resonance structure. I mean, it can you can actually draw it in different from three different forms. So, guys, under my topic of VSPR, you can learn more about that. CO, you can talk about the bond here. Here, I'm talking about one, two, three, four, five, six. That is that. Another way you can draw it is uh, by bringing this double bond and C, and you have you have uh, it, it will be in the other way around. I'm trying to turn it. Then the other way can be this is a double bond, double bond. Then this is O. That's resonance structure. It can actually be drawn in different, or just like a benzene. Remember benzene. So the same way is the same way. You can also draw it. And in this case, you interchange the position. Then you have to fill your loom here. Drawing level dot structure. If you don't know that, I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in a separate video, maybe like 20 to 25 minutes. You are going to understand. And the third way in which you can draw. CO2, it has a linear structure and the shape should work. It should be SP, I guys. SP2, triagonal structure. SP3, the trihedra. So I don't think these are difficult things. So when it is triple bond, the third way, then C will come here, then the O will come here. And you have O minus one, two, three, four, five, six. So because I'm rushing, this is the resonance structure of CO2. So it can be drawn in different, different ways. And the reason is because it was carbon has a tendency to form a P pi P pi bond. We've talked about that. So CO2 structure is what linear. The same thing to CO is also linear actually. So urea is made from carbon dioxide, is correct. The next question I have to increase the pace. Which is used by fire extinguisher? This is also correct. CO2 is used by fire extinguisher. The next one. The addition of CO2 in this one, I told you is SP. I this is the answer. And that is why it has a linear, linear shape. The next one, which are following is correct resonating structure of CO2. It can be drawn here, negative end, positive end, there is a structure, then another way interchanging the first one and the third one. So these are all correct. So this is the expected answer you have to pick. So guys, the next one, because of time, I have four minutes more. Then about the four minutes more, I'll be quick to actually talk about the last aspect, which is silica or silicon, which is also important. So this is the last set of questions I'm going to be doing for today, and I'm going to be doing that very fast. So let's be fast to answer questions on silicon. I hope you guys are with me. So we said silicon is the second most abundant element in what? In uh, on the earth surface. So most of the silicon are seen as silicon dioxide, SiO2, which is commonly seen as, a, or known as a silica. Please note that I won't talk about. So now most of them are what they exist in what in crystalline form. They call it crystallography. They exist in crystalline form. Most of the crystalline form of our silicon, crystalline form of silicon are the one you guys know very well. Quartz. Permit my spelling. My spelling is wrong. We have a crystobalite. Crystal. Crystobalite. And the third one is called tridiamond. Tridiamond. These are the three crystal crystalline form of silicon. 
or silicon as the case may be. So note that silicon don't react like that. They don't actually react with most of the elements. That's one thing about them. But keep it at the back of your mind. I should have talked about their structure and everything, but keep it at the back of your mind. They don't react because of their, they are close to inertness, but they react with two major elements, which is sodium hydroxide and fluorine or hydrogen fluoride, not fluorine. Should I put the right? This is SiO2 plus uh, NaOH. It's common. You have Na2SiO3 plus what? Water. So the other reaction I talk about, SiO2 plus HF. Wow, this thing is loading. I don't have time. I mean, it's giving me time. I have to finish and uh, do that quickly, please, fast. Oh, wow. It's still loading. So silicon in normal form, you know, don't react because they have high, uh, silica is, see, when we talk about some form of silica, silicon, we have silica gel. You understand? Silica gel are mostly used as a drying agent. You've heard about that. I need to combine with hydrogen fluoride. That is what I'm talking about. So when it's combined with hydrogen fluoride, it's very easy to know to be SiF4 plus water. You balance the equation, I didn't balance. So most of the silicon are in form of silica. And you have to keep that at the back of your mind. And that is that. So quartz, which the way you see silica in form of quartz, cristobalite, tridimite, and so on and so forth, which are called what? The crystalline form. You also have the amorphous form of silica. I talk about that time is not for my uh, no, for that is the one that is non crystalline, and that one is called I think it is called Kills Legal. Kiss Legal. I hope I can spell it K I L E. I'm not sure about the spelling, it's called Kiss Legal, something like that. If I see it, Kiss Legal, or something like that, I'm not so sure. Kiss Legal, something like this. So, but this is the name Kiss Legal, whatever that is the name of the word, amorphous form of word. Of silica. So silicon exists as silica as siliconics. That's another thing they call siliconics. Siliconics. Please be careful. Silica is different from siliconate. Siliconates generally they are used as polymers. Another your topic of polymerization, polymers. You know, combining different monomers together. They have general formula of R2 SiO. Where R here means uh the acute group. I mean, please. I beg for five more minutes, I will finish up, I promise. So that is siliconase. So silicon, silica are like this, crystalline and not crystalline. Siliconates are general form, mostly used as what? As a, and you know the uses of uh, all these uh, quartz. Quartz are used as what we call, we call it piezoelectric substances, piezo, piezoelectric. That is in communication, telephone, radio, so on and so forth. You understand? So they are they are used to develop all these things. So pixel electric, that is most use of uh whereby this guy, I think this guy Kiss Lega is used as a uh, is used as a um, is used for filtration process in plant. Yeah, filtration process, filtration process in plant. In plant. So let me quickly go through this. Which of is a crystalline form of this? Quartz, crystobalite, and tridimite. All of this is correct. I talked about these lines here, as you can see. The next one, I have to increase my pace. Apologies, silica does not react with. Silica does not react with halogens. They don't react with dihydrogen. So both of this is correct. I told you only react with. Uh, they only react with uh, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen fluoride. Yes, basically. So now the next one, and most silica gels are used as drying agents. You should know that. And they can also be used as uh, in the... Uh, silica they are also used in uh, this popular stuff. You guys should remember um, this uh, during your chromatography. Remember? Yes, silica gel. Now, which of the following statement is correct? Silica and CSIO2. It reacts with this. It reacts with this. It doesn't react with this, then this is for it. The next one, almost there. The next one is uh, which among is used as piezoelectric material? I talked about that. Quartz is the answer. The next question, we are almost there, 330 something. Which of the following is used as drying agent? Silica gel is used as drying agent. 
We don't need to waste time. Next question. The amorphous form of silica there is kiss seagull. You can see this is a spelling. Please note that kiss seagull. The next one. The carbon carbon length in uh, graphite is dash. I think we've done this one the other time. It's 141.5. So please note that. I think it's a repetition of my question. The next one. The chain length of polymer, the chain length of polymer can be controlled by adding silicone. Silicones. Silicones. So I told you the structural formula methyl group with SIC here. So note that these are the methyl, methyl, methyl. So all of this is correct for this question. The next question, I'm almost there. I'm sorry if I'm rushing. The next question as which of the following is an example of silicate that is found in nature? Silicate. Now, when we talk about silicate, silicates are not different from silicon. You know, we talk about silica, silicon, silicones, and now silicate. Now, silicates are written as because all these things may look uh, simple, but when you see them, I told you silicones are used as polymer, most importantly. So silicates are written as SiO4 minus. This is their general formula. General formula of silicates. One minute more, I will soon finish at me of silicates. And most of them do have what their sp 3 ip That is true. It is important. And because of that, you know, this year will be tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. That is the way they actually have drawn it. And because of this, I've been giving me hand to hand up what I am doing. So I'm going to round up because of, of my dear admin. So my dear admin, I'm almost there. And uh, because of, this is how the shape looked like, I just want to guess. Should, there should be something like this is how the shape of uh, silica. Most of the silicates can be seen as a uh, a lot, a lot of example. Third spa zeolite. Even if you don't know it, you see, remember zeolite when we talk about liquid zeolite in the treatment of what? Hard water, separation of hard water. When you say zeolite method, that is a permutate method. So, treatment of water, very important. Treatment of uh, tan water. I hope you guys are still with me. So, zeolite is just replacing the what the metallic ion introducing metal into what the general formula of what of silicate so note that so the answer here is what zeolite and these are correct so this will be both i don't want to talk too much just to under answer the question and we move away so they are also use zeolite i also also use zeolite i also use as a catal catalyst so note that apart from treatment of water sio4 4 minus as a symbol for silicate I hope you guys are with me. Which among the following is the correct trigonometry of this guy? Tetrahedron. I drew it just now. Then I am almost, I think, four questions more. At me, sorry, I must finish. When silicate units are linked together, they form 3D structure. Please note that. This is the answer to that. Then the next question. Kislego is used in dash. I think I've done this one. Kiss Lego is used in no filtration plant. Yes, I, I gave a note in that. So this is the answer. They are not used as drying agents. Silica gel are used as drying agents. The next one, man-made silicates are glass and cement. Please note that. Man-made silicates are glass and cement. Then next. Then this is. Dash are widely used as catalysts in petrochemical and cracking of hydrogen. Catalyst is what? Zeo, zeolite. Zeolite are used as catalysts in what? Hydrocarbon. So note that answer. Next one, silica gel are not used as catalysts in hydrocarbon, but what? Zeolite. Dash are used as ion extender in softening of hard water. Hydrated zeolite. Remember? Thank you very much. The next one. Last question for today. Zeolite used to convert alcohol to gasoline. There's a special form of zeolite because ZSM5 is common. You can note it. Convert directly alcohol to gasoline. So, my dear student, the 
says where we are going to stop on this section of uh, the line by line of the what of the carbon and its compound i hope you enjoyed the class so guys if you do so kindly subscribe share the content to other people so that they can watch it they can actually what join us because if it's by what we see in case of your comment how you comment the number of subscribers we have this is what gives us what more joy to give you more quality videos so i will see you guys in the next future videos take care and do have a wonderful time device where and best of luck to those of you that were writing exam on chemistry so bye for me